nestled in between the rocks at the foot of the massive Nordensjö glacier on Svalbard, stands one lonely cabin. This is the Nordensjö Lodge, and its location is likely one of the most spectacular you've ever seen. Situated in Billefjorden, miles away from Longyearbyen, this location exists entirely off the grid, disconnected from the wider world. Unlike the majority of Svalbard's cabins that are accessible only to locals, this particular cabin welcomes visitors from across the globe. We are dedicating 24 hours to experience what it's like to be a guest here and also what it's like to live and work here, so far removed from civilization, on a small remote island in the Arctic. This is where we're going to spend the next 24 hours. Welcome to the Nordenskjöld Lodge. Come in. Okay, so the first room we have here is the hallway. And I'm guessing these are for when you go kayaking. There's a few activities you can do here. Take your shoes off, of course. And here we have the bathroom. And it has the same kind of bathroom that we have at home, so a Cinderella. So one of these, so we feel right at home. Come in here, there's a little wash basin here to wash your hands. And then look at this. This is without a doubt the like most spectacular cabin that I've been in. There, it's just so fancy. I've always wanted to come to this cabin. In my eight years of living here, this has been like a goal. So I'm very happy that Base Camp let us come and check this place out for 24 hours. Uh, so we're gonna stay the night here. A dream come true. Like, I'm not kidding. If you look out the windows, the glacier's right there. So this is the living room and the dining area. So I'm guessing we're gonna eat our dinner here and breakfast because I think lunch will be served outside on the glacier. Over here, we have a little pantry and you know, this so they even cook your food for you here we're gonna have a meal made by roger tonight and they are hosting the entire experience so when you come and visit you just kind of check in like it's a hotel but you just have to get here yeah so maybe i should show you how we even got here this adventure begins in longebin the world's northernmost town where you board a boat that will take you on a two-hour boat ride to this cabin we headed out in no wind on a mirror-like ocean, which made for a quicker trip than usual. When you see a massive glacier take over the entire view, you know that you're getting close to the destination. There is no place to dock the bigger boat, so you head ashore with a Zodiac and then walk the last 200 meters to the cabin. With a boat and then you have to go with a mini boat and then you can't leave, but my kind of hotel. And then here you have the drinking water. This is collected from the glacier. Now we're going to go upstairs and check out the bedrooms. There's about eight to ten places where you can sleep. There's two here at the bottom in bunk beds, but they generally don't like to keep people or guests sleeping on the first floor because of the polar bear danger. So they like to have us all upstairs so they can just kind of, you know, have full control. This is the little library. There's a bunch of books. You can sit here and chill, very, very cozy. And then we have three bedrooms, each with two beds. No, four bedrooms, sorry. I'm gonna show you our bedroom. <laughs> so even though this bedroom does not have a double bed like the other one does this has a view of the glacier so quite obviously this is where we're gonna sleep because who does not want to wake up to this incredible incredible i'm so excited for these 24 hours were you christopher oh yes for <laughs> What's I think that's... <laughs> 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 <Thank you. laughs> nice. Oh, we don't get this every day. <laughs> Fresh fruit and candy. <laughs> this is Hannah. Hello, hello. So I work here uh, for a month right now. 
uh, I've been I had the pleasure of coming out to this amazing cabin already in the winter for a little bit to check out how it is to decide if we want to join for the summer um, I come from Slovenia otherwise I've been on Svalbard for past two years I've been a dog sledding guide most of my life and this is Tintin and he is one of retired sled dogs we retired last year from dog sledding together so now he's having an amazing retirement life at uh, in the middle of Svalbard wilderness. <laughs> I love it. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. So all of the stuff comes with the boats with the guests. Um, we get it usually every three days, sometimes every five days. The water we have to pick up the glacier ice. Uh, to melt it for our drinking water. We have a lovely pond here in the back that we can use as uh, dishwashing in the summer. In the winter we have to melt the snow around us. Um, and also we're a little bit lucky with that. We don't need to do all the laundry and everything. Everything goes guests shipped to town with the guests. So. Where did this come from? This is from a stream that comes from the rocks, just from the glacier. Christine, and then later when I drop you off to the glacier, I'm gonna pick up some of the glacier ice as well. So this is drinking water? Yes. We are gonna go glacier walking now, but we need some safety gear first. Because, you know, we're gonna walk on a glacier. We're also gonna have crampons, but we're gonna put them on later and we're gonna have a beautiful helmet because safety is important. Okay, this looks terrific. This, I'll put it there now. Okay. Never <coughs> felt more ready in my entire life. This is a look. We geared up and headed over to the bottom of the glacier to start our hike. When you visit this cabin, there is a guide with you ready to take you on adventures at any time. It can be hiking, kayaking, or glacier walking. Since all of Svalbard is polar bear land, you cannot, as a guest, venture out on your own. Crampons? Um, the worst thing that can happen today, really, is that you uh, rip your pants. Perfect. So when, you, uh, when you move your uh, legs with the crampons on, don't uh, try to uh, step far. You might fall oh. because of that. Oh. Oh. When you go down. Yeah, walking with crampons, you want to have as many spikes in the ice at the same time. You know, when we walk without shoes, when we walk in a side hill, we might tilt our foot a bit like that. Yeah. But here we rather want to have them flat on the ice. That's freaking cool. Over about 60% of Svalbard is covered in glaciers. In winter, we drive snowmobile on them to get to faraway destinations, or we drive to see the glacier front somewhat up close. But this was just unreal. To be able to see how blue the ice is up close, or the size of the ridges, or how deep some of the crevasses are, it's equally terrifying as it is beautiful. This is not an activity that Christopher and I have done much of at all up here, but something that I already look forward to doing again. I could spend hours looking at the details in the glacier and taking photos of the many bright blue meltwater streams making their way down the ice. One word, mesmerizing. We are enjoying a nice little sandwich that Christopher packed for us. Just taking a blur... B b just taking a little break on the glacier. This is so beautiful. A little scary with the huge crevasses, but you know, as long as we don't step into them, I don't know. Incredible day. Look at this. Unreal is all I can say about it. So when you book a trip to go to stay at the cabin. They have a guide with you and you can go here and you can be here for hours. It's like a whole thing. And I feel like this is one of the 
coolest activities you can do on Svalbard. It's just so crazy to walk and see this blue ice so close up and it's just, I don't know, it's unreal. They haven't had a polar bear here for what they've seen for like two weeks, but the weeks before that they had a really fat polar bear here, a mama polar bear or a female. She was here for like three weeks apparently and in one day she caught two seals. <laughs> So she was chunky and a good hunter. Just what you want a polar bear to be. Now I'm going to continue eating this and then we're going to head back to the cabin I think because we want to have maybe some proper lunch. I don't know. We're going to see what we're going to do. But this is just absolutely unreal. So this cabin was built in 2008 and 2011 Base Camp Explorer bought it. Ever since then they had trips here when it's available to come here which is in the summer season and winter season when it's been ice out. This is uh, Cecilia's first trip here. I've been here a few times. I had a couple of friends who've been working here so Every time I was here, Ella stopped. Every time I was in Billefjord and I dropped by for a coffee or a chat or a barbecue or whatever it was. So I have some good memories from this place. Of course, Christopher has visited before because he has friends everywhere, which is very, very good. But I've never been here. I've only been in the fjord and always said, one day I'm going to come and visit. And we asked the base camp and we said, is it possible for us to just come for 24 hours, check it out, see what it's all about and just document it? And they said, yes. So first of all, a huge thank you to base camp. And if you want to check out this place and be able to come here and see it all, whether it's winter or summer, click the link in the description. So it's definitely, it goes under sponsored video, but it's one of my dreams to come here. So I would say it's, you know, the best of both worlds. Now we're gonna check out Nordenskjöld Lodge Spa, the sauna. So it's the dressing room. And it's a big sauna. 
It is a big sauna. Yeah, it's for like six people at least. So when you heat up the sauna, you put water here and you can add a hot shower after. But you can also swim in the pond behind the sauna. So you can swim and take a shower. So it's easy to live here. Nice place. Roger, I have a burning question. How do you shower? In the sauna, we have a water reservoir with hot water and we take buckets of cold water from the pond, mix it to the perfect temperature and then you just ladle the water and then you <laughs> washy washy it, ladle it all off. It drains straight out of the sauna. We have a little drainage pipe. That's Stop. Arctic shower. Our clothes we do wash here as well. Mainly like just the underwears and the socks, of course. And that's just also with the hot water in a bucket, like old school times. Mm. Yeah. And, then, and we have a sauna that's already warm, so we just hang it up there. It dries really fast. So we get dry stuff. The last time I was here, it was no electricity at all. But now it's a full on solar panel system here. So you actually have like lights in the bedrooms and you can charge your phones here and you have a Wi-Fi. It's kind of impressive out remote, far away like this, I think. And it works so good up here because like you have the, the sun 24 hours a day in the summertime. So no, oh, that's really good. It's a good system, works good up here. There's absolutely no cell service anywhere here, but when we were on the glacier, absolutely all the way far up, that's when I had cell service. I guess it, we were just so far up that we could connect to whatever is yeah. all the way over there, which is just mind boggling. So I sent my bestie Michaela a full on video <laughs> from <laughs> walking on the glacier. She's like, excuse me, what are you already back? I'm like, no, I'm on a glacier. After our delicious lunch, we had a little walk around the cabin and then I went to our room to have an afternoon nap. I have wanted to visit this cabin for so long and to be honest, my expectations were pretty high. But this place is more than living up to them. This is such a unique experience in the most impressive location. Like I mentioned before, almost all of the remote cabins on Svalbard are only for us locals to use. So if you want to get that off-grid Svalbard experience, this is an excellent option. After my nap, I came down to the table set for dinner, a fire lit in the fireplace and a beverage waiting for me. So my name is Rol Gier. I'm from the Netherlands, Amsterdam. Been on the island for close to five years now. And my profession is cooking food and be in a good mood. <laughs> so normally I'm uh, at Ishard Radio, which is all the way on the other side of the fjord, actually at the beginning of the fjord. And now I'm having a little holiday working for our lovely guests in Northern Shore Lodge. So Hanna is the host and I am the cook. Oh, having to go back into town. <laughs> Love it. Yes, um, you get really used to the freedom and the, how do you say it? Yeah, the freedom, the adventure that comes with the place. And just, you have to adapt living in a place like this. So then you go back into town and you go back to normal life. It's well, not challenging, but it's... You miss this, I right? miss this more than anything else, yeah. wild to be so close to this glacier because you can really hear it all the time. It's like thundering in the background. It's been calving a little bit today, even when we were on the glacier walking, like a small pieces of the front, you can just hear them go and fall into the water. That's why you don't also, you don't walk on the front. That'd be pretty dangerous. But it's really, really moody vibes here now. You can hear the birds screaming and just nothing but the sounds of nature here. I love it. I could easily live a month here. 
it's now almost 10 p.m. And we're gonna go to bed because we were up so early. Oh my gosh, I am so warm. We had the fire on downstairs and it quickly becomes pretty toasty. Oh, the dinner was incredible. It feels so crazy to be out in the middle of nowhere and get served, you know, slobbered reindeer. And it was so tasty and a really nice meal after a long day of different activities. The glacier walk was unreal. It's something I want to do so many more times because I feel like I could spend hours up there just photographing the different colors of the ice and, you know, all of the different crevasses. It's, it was so beautiful. But now we're going to go to bed. Outside is very bright, <laughs> very bright. And also quite foggy. But it said it was going to be really foggy tomorrow morning. So our plan is we're going to get up around eight. We're going to have a coffee overlooking the glacier. And then we're going to have breakfast. And then we're going to go back home. Oh, I'm going to put some pajamas on. I'll be back when I have my jammies. Okay, I'll be back. That's, oh, <laughs> that's a short arm. Now I'm going to go down and brush my teeth. Yeah, let's go down and brush our teeth, our teethies. bit of rain in the air, mist and fog. It feels very eerie and moody vibes are my faves. I think we're gonna sleep like babies. So I think it's time to say good night and I shall see you guys tomorrow morning. Yeah, let's head inside. Good morning. What are you Christopher? There are beluga whales in front of the glacier. <laughs> Hello, good morning. You're beautiful. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Beluga whales in front of the glacier. It's a completely still day. There's no wind and I'm ready to move here. <laughs> Christopher, are we moving in? Yes. <laughs> Tintin, it's just gonna be us. So now this morning, we're just gonna have breakfast. It's early right now. I think it's like eight. And we're going to have breakfast, coffee, have a look at the beluga whales, and then we're going to head on home. So we're going to show you breakfast. <laughs> yeah, but first, should we take a good look at the belugas? Maybe bring our coffee up on the mountain here. Wow. space in a single sail white rocky island you and I on the trail just as in the waves no need to be hey in the heart
we are now packing up and we have all of our stuff here. Gotta say goodbye to the dog first, of course. Oh, hello. Hey, do it's been a pleasure knowing you and we love you and you're beautiful. You know, be the strong man that you are every day. And we say goodbye to this cabin. We will see you guys in the next video. Remember to head to the description to check out Base Camp and the Nordenskjö Lodge if you want to come a visit. Highly recommend it. It's an unforgettable experience. It truly is. Uh, I will see you guys in the next week. Bye from me and Tintin. <laughs> Bye.